Hello and welcome back to Cheesy Code. In this lecture, we will learn about the static keyword in C# -sharp language, and we will also learn about the static and instance members. So let's get started. First of all, we will see what we are going to cover in this video. So first, we will discuss what is static. Then we will see how exactly we have to use the static keyword. Then what is static class, static members, and then finally we'll end up with static constructor. So to start off, let's see what is static. So if we go to the dictionary and check out what exactly is static, it says that something that is lacking in movement, action, or change. So by this we know in C# -sharp, if anything is marked as static on application start, a memory would be allocated to that variable or method. And for the lifetime of the application, that static method or variable will point to the same memory location. So in programming words, you can say that those methods and variables which don't need an instance of a class to be created are defined as static. Why they are marked as static, how they are marked as static, that we'll look into shortly. Now the third point is, as I said that anything that is marked as static gets its memory allocated at the application start. So it is available at any point of time whenever you need it till the application is closed. We can define two things as static. We can define static classes and we can also define static members. Now let's have a look how we use this static keyword. So here are some examples to show the usage of static keyword. Here the static keyword is used between the access modifier and the class keyword. So by placing static keyword between these two keywords make the class static. Also, if you want to create a static field or static property, we can use static keyword in the similar fashion. Now let's see what exactly is static class. What happens when we make a class static? So static class cannot be initialized and is not needed to be initialized. You might ask why? Because whenever we mark something as static, the memory is already allocated to it. So there's no point of using the new keyword and creating instance of it. Now as we learned that we cannot create an instance of it, so the static class is directly accessible with its name. We will see how we can access static class using example shortly. The third point is it's mandatory to declare all the members, be it field, property or constructor inside the static class as static. Otherwise the compiler will throw an error. Now we specify a class as static when we need some set of methods that require input and give output without depending on the other class members. So the best example of this in C# -sharp is system.math class. It performs all the arithmetic operations just by taking the input and presenting the output. Also these classes are by default sealed, which means they cannot be inherited. Also they cannot inherit from any other class except system.object class. So if you create a static class and you want other class to inherit it, then that's not possible. The compiler will not let you do it. We'll be seeing the example of static class and static members shortly. But let me first tell you the theory part, which is very useful. So let's see what are static members. So any member that is declared in a class using static keyword is called static member. In static classes, every member is static member because it is mandatory. But you can also specify static member inside non-static classes. These are directly accessible by the class name, not the instance name. This is something that we discussed while discussing static class. So whenever something is marked as static, it is accessed by using the class name. These static members are usually created to store a value that has to be shared among all the instances. For example, if we have a variable that contains this account in a website, in that case, we can take that variable as static so that across the application lifetime, the visitor count is available to all the instances. Now, as we already know that the static member gets memory allocated at the application start. So regardless of how many instances of a class are created, there will be a single copy of that static member. Now let's go to the code and see some working examples. So here we have defined two classes. One is static class and another one is non-static class. We have members inside it. Since it is a static class, all the members present in it are static. Like we have static field, static property, static method. 
Then we have static constructor. We'll be discussing about this shortly. Now in non-static class, we have non-static field over here, which is called instance member. And any member which is specified as static is called static member. So here, as you can see that this class is not static, but we still have a property which is marked as static. So that's how we can have static members inside a non-static class. So these are the two classes that I've created. Now let's see how to access these members. So here what I've written is, I cannot create an instance of a static class as I've already specified. If I try to do it, the compiler will throw me in an error. It says I cannot create an instance of a static class. So if I cannot create an instance, how will I access these properties? So to do it, we just have to specify the class name and placing a dot after it, it will show me all the static members that I have. So if I wanted to access this static field, this is how we use it. I can specify it to a value. That's how we can use static field. So to access any static member, what we have to do is only specify the class name followed by the member name. This way of accessing a member is only valid in case of static members. If I try to do it in instance members like here, here I am trying to access an instance member which is a non-static field. Then the compiler is throwing me an error. An object reference is required for the non-static field method or property. So to access this field, I have to create an instance of a non-static class. And the field will now be accessible by the instance name. So that's how I can access the non-static field by creating an instance. But in case I want to use this static member of a non-static class, in that case also, the way is same. We just have to specify the class name and then the name of the static member. So this is it about the instance members and the static members. Now let's have a look at this, that is the static constructor. So you must be knowing that every class has constructor and the purpose of constructor is to initialize the default values of the field present in the class. Now the static constructor is used to initialize the value of the static fields and it is called only once in the application lifetime regardless how many instances are created of a class. Whenever an instance of a class is created, it will call the public constructor, not the static constructor of that class. Also you cannot specify access modifiers like public private to the static constructors as they are by default public. So let's have a look at the static constructor we have. Here in this non-static class, we have the static constructor, but it can only initialize the static member of the class. If I try to initialize the instance member, the compiler will throw me an error. It says that this field is not directly accessible. So this is not possible. The compiler will throw me an error. Now the basic difference between this public constructor and the static constructor, public constructor can initialize all the fields, be it static or non-static but static constructor can only initialize the static members. This static constructor is called only once, while this public constructor is called every time an instance is created. Now here in this code, I have created an instance of non-static class, and I'm printing the static property of this particular class. Now see the output. The output is 50. So why it is 50? Because at the application start, the static constructor was created, and the property value was set to 20. Now when the instance was created, the static property became 50. If I comment this line and I try to print it, now the value would be 20. See? This value is coming from the static constructor and the earlier value was coming from the public constructor because that public constructor is called after the static constructor is called. Now that's all about static constructor. Now let's see when we should use static keyword. So we can have a static class if we need a utility class which doesn't change the state of an object. Like we have system.math class. It just do the arithmetic operation, takes the input, gives us the output. 
So if we have a class in mind which performs similar action, we can make it static. Also if you need a global method or property whose output doesn't rely on the instance members, then you can make it static. Or if you want to make a global variable that is available to all the instances, in that case you can make the variable static. Like we had the example of visitor counts on a website. So all in all when we use static keyword, it brings down the memory usage. Because if something is made static, then the memory is allocated to them only once and there is a single copy that is available throughout the application lifetime. So even if there are multiple instances that are created, there would be only one copy of that static member. So that's how you can judge when to use static keyword. So that's all for now. For more C-sharp related topics, you can stay tuned to Cheesy Code. You can also visit our site cheesycode.com. We have a tutorial series for C Sharp over there. If you liked the video, please subscribe to our channel and stay tuned to Cheesy Code for more such videos. Thank you for watching.